build bigger business at cost of community or cultivate community at cost of business? Great question. I don't think it needs to be one or the other. I think you can have good a uh, good community and good business. It's not like you have to pick one. But I would say start with community first in most cases. That's what I did. And because a community doesn't cost any money, you can build a community right now, immediately, if you wanted. The thing about that is, if you're wanting to start with community, you have to put a lot of your time and effort into it. You have to be present. So with regards to a gym, I started with my community because I didn't have a gym that really sold itself. Uh, it was a bare bones, minimal gym. None of the equipment is very cool, except maybe the strongman stuff. And so I started with a community first. And because again, that didn't cost any money. Now, if you have a lot of money and you're wanting to open a gym and you don't have the time to be at the gym or maybe you're not a people person, you just don't like dealing with people but you want to open a gym, then yeah, you, can, uh, you would have to dump a lot of money into a gym that sells itself and you don't have to be there to try to build the community. Um, but again, uh, I think one thing that really helps my gym is the community. So for example, I have a strongman class that I do and I've done it ever since I opened from day one. Still do it. Um, and I'm still the one who runs it. And it's a big class, it's a group class. It's like 25 to 30 people that show up to these classes. And that brings in uh, a good amount of business or it gets a lot of eyeballs onto uh, my business because People who go to those classes, we train in a parking lot with strongman equipment. So like it's very minimal equipment, but people really enjoy going to those classes because of the community. And those people are more likely to tell their friends or invite their friends to come try one of the classes out. It's just so much easier to try one of those classes out or to convince someone to come with you to a class than it is just to convince someone to go work out. So for example, if I said, uh, you know, mom, you really need to start uh, exercising and getting to the gym. Hey, there's a gym called Untamed Strength. On your own, why don't you go in and, you know, do a workout? You know, of course, that's gonna, she's most likely not going to go into the gym on her own and do that. But if you're like, hey, hey mom, or whoever, come on into this class, it's a group class. Uh, I'll be right there with you. We can go at our own pace. We'll kind of, you know, hang out in the back. Uh, I'll be right by your, your side. I'll hold your hand through it, whatever. Um, I'm not saying that's what you know everyone does, but it's just easier to invite someone when you have this good community of people to go train with. Um, so anyways, I'm rambling here. The thing about community is you have to be in charge of building that community. You kind of have to set the standard and build whatever community you want. If you start a gym, and the community turns out to be not what you had intended or expected, but you didn't do anything to build the community yourself, well, you really have no one to blame but yourself. And to be honest, I would not want a bunch of business and make a whole bunch of money if I had a gym with a terrible community of people. That doesn't sound enjoyable to me. The question that rolls right off that. What do you love most about the community you've built at Untamed? I love the fact that people spend so much of their time at Untamed Strength and that they, they enjoy being there multiple times a week for an hour, two hours at a time. Uh, it means a lot to me and I take this gym personally and so when I see other people get excited about being there, uh, it's great. Um, and I like hearing stories about people saying they've tried exercising multiple times and failed, you know, in the past decade or their whole life. And this is the first thing, Untamed Strength is the first thing they've been able to stick to. Whether that's because they go to the strongman classes or they just like going to the gym, or maybe they've found powerlifting or strongman training, whatever it is. Um, just to hear that Untamed Strength can help them adhere to an exercise routine and have this healthy hobby, I think is, the I'd probably say the best part and most rewarding part about owning my own gym and about uh, the community. When I reflect back on the community that we've all built, it's not that I've built.
Okay, I think I can move on to some of these questions about gym members and culture and things like that. What are your biggest pet peeves that members seem to always do? I don't have any pet peeves that members always do because if it was something that was always happening, I would address it or I'd try to do something about it. I think this is what helps when you have your you know, boots on the ground as a business owner. You gotta be at your facility. You gotta see what things need to be worked on. If you're not there, if you're absent, you're never gonna be aware of any of this. Um, so pet peeves, there are none that really stand out. <clears throat> Um, I think that if something is happening, if there's something happening, um, something consistent or something specific that keeps happening, I'm just going to figure out who's doing it and then just talk to them about it and ask them not to do it. For example, if I saw 50 pound dumbbells being left out on a bench, like a couple times a week or all the time, I'd be like, all right, someone, one person keeps leaving these dumbbells here. So I'll check the cameras at who it was and I'll just let them know, hey, will you put your weight back, please? Um, so I'll actually address it. <clears throat> if it's something like there's, you know, there's equipment laying everywhere all the time or people are spilling drinks everywhere, then yeah, I might address the, the whole gym and ask them to be mindful of cleaning up after themselves. Um, with that, let me do a set and I'll talk. There used to be a time when if, uh, for example, if there was stuff being left out, I might complain, like, why are you leaving your plates out? Why are you leaving your bars out? Why is there dumbbells out? And I would just kind of complain about everything or like <clears throat> expect all the members to be perfect. And I think that as I've matured, I would say that from, you know, the amount of maturity from age 25 to 35 is about the same as maturity from age 15 to 25 like a decade long uh, level of maturity, <clears throat> this next level of maturity. And so when I was younger and I first started out, yeah, I was like, why are you putting, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Clean this up, clean that up. That is, that's essentially me complaining about my job. <clears throat> that all comes with the, uh, with gym ownership. It all comes with in the description or the duty, uh, the job title of owning a gym. You got to clean up after people. It's fine, as long as it's not excessive and people are being simply disrespectful. A little bit of cleanup here and there is not worth complaining about. It's like someone who works at McDonald's is like, oh, I gotta, I gotta cook these fries all the time. People are always buying fries and I gotta get more, put it in the fryer. You're complaining about your job at that point. So it's not worth it to me. Uh, and you sound like a crybaby when you complain about things that other gym members are doing, or things that your gym members are doing. There was a time when I never had to clean anything up. I would, the gym would be perfectly neat and tidy when I leave. When I get back, it'd still be in the exact same position because I didn't have any members. So if people are using the gym, good. Uh, every once in a while, there's gonna be some stuff left out, not a big deal. I actually, when I saw, <clears throat> I think it was uh, Fullsterker on uh, Rogue's YouTube channel, and Magnus Vermagnuson in that video, he owns a gym in Iceland. Magnus Vermagnuson, one of the greatest strongman competitors of all time, four-time world strongest man. He walks into his gym, it's a little documentary thing, he walks into his gym and the first thing he does is pick up some dumbbells and put them away. There's like 60 kilos on the bench. He takes the, the 20 kilos off, and puts them away with a smile on his face. And I'm like, all right, if Magnus Vermagnuson can clean up after some gym members and not complain about it, I can too. Um, I do have two employees who help with the cleanup, which is nice, but that's all part of the part of the gym title is cleaning up after members. So that used to bother me, it doesn't really anymore. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm doing some speed bench for warm-ups, even though it's not very speedy and they're very long rest periods, but I'm gonna do about three more sets of this weight and then I'll increase. Um, something that bothers me, not really pertaining to the members, it's not a pet peeve, but people in general, something that bothers me is um, when you're not taken seriously because you're a small business or when people treat you differently because you're a small business. What I mean is, oh yeah, you know, I, I know the owner, you know, uh, this gym is just, it's Alan, you know, just his gym. Uh, 
I've met them before, you know, it's not a big deal. Uh, so they bring their friends in and they, you know, drop in, bring their friends in, whatever, when I'm not there to work out, don't pay a drop in, don't sign a waiver. Uh, they just think they're like, oh, you know, I'm a member here, I pay so I can bring people in. You know, not to tell them, hey, if you're a member or if you're not a member, you gotta pay a drop in. And I've had people say like, oh, he did pay a drop in. I said, uh, like two weeks ago? Yeah. Okay, he's got to pay a drop in every time he comes. A drop, I could, just stuff like that. Like you would never do that at 24 hour fitness. You know, just bring people in to work out. Maybe they do, I don't know, but. Um, or uh, um, just maybe doing things in a gym that uh, you would never do in a commercial gym or another business. Um, or like the payment thing that I talked about. Like, uh, yeah, my payment didn't go through. Um, I'll sign up in, a, uh, in three weeks when I get paid. You know, and it's like, what are you, how are you gonna pay for those three weeks? You know, it's just uh, stuff that would never happen in a commercial corporate gym. People think that because you're a small business, they can, you know, it's not a big deal. They can treat you differently. So that can be annoying. Um, I'll do another set. And uh, something that whoa, really used to bother me, the music at Untamed Strength. So there's always been a speaker at Untamed Strength and there was a Bluetooth connection. So if you had, if you, there was nobody on music, any, I'd let any of the members play music. For a long time, it was fine. It was pretty like middle of the road, you know, it'd be some metal, some rock, maybe some rap. Pretty uh, listenable gym music. If there was some sort of, you know, intensity to it, or it was somewhat upbeat, I was cool with it. And it was fine for a long time. But it started becoming a huge problem for over a year, probably almost two years. And I don't know why it took me so long to take to take that away from the members. Now, the music that's on Untamed, at Untamed is my music, uh, always. And it's like, I know it's like 80% metal uh, and rock, and then probably 20% rap and other miscellaneous stuff. But some people are so tone deaf with the music selection. And I don't necessarily mean I don't mean tone deaf like musically, I mean socially. If I was to go play music at a public gym with a bunch of other people, I'm gonna play something that, okay, you know, I think the majority of people will be okay with this. I'm not saying everyone would love it, but uh, people would be okay with this. People will play the worst music I've ever heard. I'll just say to myself, what the hell are we listening to? Uh, uh, some examples, they'll play like extremely, sexual music. I don't need to hear about sucking D's and eating peas like on the loudspeaker while I'm trying to lift. What the hell are you listening to? Um, or they'd play uh, like some crazy hardcore uh, dubstep electronic type music. And I like that. I like dubstep and uh, house music. That's like, some of that's fine with me. Um, but it's like, <laughs> I'm like, what? It's just like a robot malfunctioning. This is so obnoxious. It like hurt my ears. And uh, the people would play music at full blast. We've blown through speakers. Like the speakers sounded terrible because it was just blown. I'm like, what are you guys doing? You can't even hide from it at times. You can't even put headphones in because it's so loud. Um, and it sounds terrible. Um, People would also, oh, people would be in a mood. So members would be in a real mood, real, and they play real moody music. I'm like, dude, keep your mood to yourself. Put your headphones in, keep to yourself. I don't need to hear Billie Eilish, like whining about something on the speakers. Why are you playing this? It's so slow. Um, or they'd play like some terrible, brain dead cough syrup. <laughs> just mumble and I'm like again what the hell are we listening to dude I don't know how you even listen to this let alone play it in front of everyone um, then there was a huge problem with political music like people had an agenda when they would get on the speaker I'm like man this is not your myspace profile page this is a public gym they play like that Stuff like that, F Donald Trump, F Donald Trump. And then the next group would get on and it'd be a battle back and forth and they'd play like the, the super, like Tom McDonald, uh, just political music back and forth. I'm like, 
you guys are so lame. Stop playing this music. Uh, so uh, that was a huge stress point. And uh, I don't know why it took me so long to kank music from members, but that bothered me. Uh, one thing about the music that, I'm, that I uh, had just thought of, I realize when I say like you play stuff that nobody likes, I realize that uh, not everyone likes metal and I play the majority of my music is metal, but it's pretty like middle of the road, listenable music, listenable metal. I realize not everyone wants to hear about coming blood and burning churches on the loudspeaker and nobody wants to hear, you know, <laughs> so I don't play much of that. Um, so I just am aware that like I probably shouldn't put this on the stereo. Um, so there's that. I realize some people are like, you like metal, but I don't. So uh, I don't want to hear this on the radio. But that's kind of also, it's my gym. So uh, that's the theme of the gym is like primarily metal music because that's what I like playing. So sorry. All right. I don't know if this is going to be the last thing I talk about. But let's talk about, there's actually some, a lot of questions, a good amount of questions about toxic gym culture. And a lot of these questions have a ton of thumbs up. So I don't know if people just want juicy details or if it's actually a, a big problem within gyms so people can relate to it. I don't really know. Um, I'm going to preface this by saying this is not the majority <clears throat> at Untamed. I've already said this before. It's unfortunate that I'm making this video like a Q&A anniversary video and I'm answering bad questions like how do you deal with bad members and what, what do you do when members do this and they don't pay and we're kicking out members and toxic gym culture. And so I'm just like celebrating my 11 years by talking about all the bad, which is not what I would like to do. Um, but I'll, I mean, if you guys want to hear it, I'll talk about it, uh, my opinion on it. But again, it is not the majority. Uh, I do not have these, ins these cases happen often. I don't have to deal with this often, just every once in a while. And so, I'll talk about it. <clears throat> okay. As someone that owns a private gym, you must be aware of how toxicity and drama can brew in such facilities. Have you personally dealt with gym toxicity and drama? Have you ever had to revoke memberships, kick people out? Uh, I won't read all of them, uh, but there's a, maybe I won't, let's see. Yeah, anyways, I'm not gonna search through this. Um, I saw some more that asked about toxic gym culture. All right, here's another question as I'm looking through this. How do you avoid your gym from having toxic gym culture? I'm trying to find where that question went, because there was a reply to it that I wanted to read. A lot of these questions I'm looking through, like I see a lot of like, is it worth it? Was it really worth it? Yes, it was absolutely worth it. If even, even if I failed, even if I crashed and burned, and I only lasted one two-year lease, it would have been worth it because the, the thought of opening a gym or the wonder, the curiosity of what happens if I would have opened a gym would have eaten me alive for who knows how long. Uh, and so just to scratch that itch and try was worth it. Even if I failed, I would know deep in my heart, hey, I tried and I did my best and it was just too much for me, too hard. Yes, it was worth it. I never even thought about, this is just what I wanted to do. I was obsessed with it and that's what I wanted to do. It was never, I never outweighed risks like, uh, or like, what, you know, what if, it ha what if it works out? What if it happens? Is it gonna be worth it? I never even thought about that. So I just don't relate to this question of was it, was it worth it? Yes, it was worth it. It's up to you to decide was it worth it. For me, it was worth every dollar I had. It was worth every second of my day for the next, whatever, 10 years. It was worth me sleeping in my truck. It was worth me riding my bike to the gym because <clears throat> I didn't have gas money. It was worth all this stuff. <clears throat> is, it, is that worth uh, it today for me with my family and my mortgage? No, so I'm not gonna do it. But it's a, just ask yourself, think about rock bottom, losing all your money, losing everything, right? Is it worth it to you? I think the only thing that it was not worth to me was my physical health. So if you told me, hey, you can open a gym, but you're no longer allowed to work out, you're no longer allowed to exercise, um, and that's it. Like, I would say, no, that's not worth it to me. But everything else, strip me of everything else, it was worth it to me. All right, back to these uh, 
toxic gym culture questions. Where is this question? Hopefully he didn't. I've refreshed this and I shouldn't have. Hopefully he didn't delete it. All right, let's go back to it. So uh, he says the heck, quite the opposite actually. Uh, let me read this again. As someone who owns a private gym, you must be aware of how toxicity and drama can brew in such facilities. How do you deal with toxicity, drama? Have you ever had to revoke memberships? And this guy says, uh, it's quite the opposite actually. You make the rules, people abide by it or they F off. Drama follows drama based, uh, drama follows drama based people and owners. And then I can't read the rest of it, but uh, it was a screenshot. But he says, you're the, you're the person like seeking out drama if you're always talking about drama. Um, so, all right, where do I even begin here? Talking about uh, Untamed Strength has never had toxic gym culture. And I'm not even sure, I guess my opinion of that or my definition of toxic gym culture would be um, senior members, coaches, trainers, owners, either mistreating, uh, teasing, um, uh, some sort of uh, uh, some sort of like abuse, um, uh, taking advantage of people, uh, doing something like this to uh, uh, certain members, uh, not treating them equally, not treating them fairly. Um, and the problem is just, uh, it's never solved. It's just reoccurring. Nothing's ever done about it. Or these senior members um, and coaches, trainers, owners are instigating the problem, making it worse. I would say that that would be toxicity within a gym. And I've never had to deal with that. The Untamed Strength has never had anything like that. Um, there are, sometimes there are problems or there are disagreements or their misunderstandings, uh, that's happened before, but I think that that's inevitable when you have a group of people, whether it's um, a community, like a neighborhood, some, if they're really close, sometimes there's gonna be like some, some issues or some clashing of personalities. Uh, within a workplace, within a gym, a gym really is, some gyms are just very transactional. You might go in, headphones in, do your workout, leave. Nobody talks to each other, which is cool, that's fine. But other gyms have a strong community and it's a social atmosphere. So people go in and they train with people, they talk to people about training, they talk to people about life, maybe they hang out outside of the gym. So it's a very social thing and that might be the most social thing they do in their life. The rest of the time is spent, I go to work or I work from home. I have to get out of the gym to go like socialize with people and see other people. So the gym can be a very social place. And when you have people from different experiences different experiences, uh, different backgrounds, different views, personalities, different beliefs, uh, uh, you know, different, uh, some people are loud, some people are shy, um, some people are talkative, you know, whatever. You have all these different, this boiling pot of different people and uh, there's gonna be some, some clashing sometimes and some disagreements. I wouldn't call that toxic gym culture, that's just the human experience and it's somewhat inevitable. So yeah, there's been situations where members in the gym, a relationship in the gym, um, went south, they split up. Uh, maybe that was kind of awkward. There's been uh, relationships in the gym where two gym members would break up and then they'd get with other gym members and start relationships. And so maybe that caused like some tension or whatnot, but I wouldn't say that was toxic gym culture. Um, that's just, that just happens. Um, I have had uh, I had I have had problems that I've had to deal with at the gym, but uh, w what I would say is this: if you are a gym owner, or even just a gym goer, the way that you squash toxic gym culture, you just see yourself out of it. You don't partake in it. You don't participate in it. You don't feed it. You don't fuel that fire. If someone's talking to you in the gym about another member, and it sounds like they're gossiping about another member, end that conversation. Let them know you're not interested in talking or just, hmm, okay, all right, sounds good. Let me do this set. And just don't partake in it. If another member is kind of ranting to me about, uh, or if a member is ranting to me about someone else or talking badly about them, um, I'll squash it. I don't need to be a shoulder to cry on because you don't like this person for these reasons. Uh, there needs to be that separation. So see yourself out of it. Don't sit there and listen to it. Don't talk about people if they're not there. Don't, or better yet, don't 
say something about someone that you wouldn't say to their face. Don't partake in the gossip. Don't let it spread. I would say that would be the best way to squash it if you ever come across that situation. I, I have been in the middle of some uh, disagreements or some issues at the gym. Uh, whether it was you know, a couple who split up and they come to me and tell me, you know, this person did this, this, and this, they're a bad person, you need to kind of kick them out or keep your eye on them or they're not a good person. And then the other person has their side of the story, two sides to every story. They say, that's a lie, that's not true. I'm not a bad person, they're a bad person, you should get rid of them. And it kind of forces me to be judge and jury, to make a decision and pick sides. And I am not gonna do that as a gym owner. And if I was a member of the gym, I wouldn't do that either. I wouldn't pick sides. Um, I would just stay neutral and stay out of it. Um, if there was something that was just way uncalled for, or if there was a member who was a terrorist or on America's Most Wanted, uh, then yes, I might uh, do something about it. But as far as disagreements, misunderstandings, things that are happening outside of the gym, I'm not gonna sit here and run the Alan Thrall show and just kick out people that I don't like or that I disagree with. I'm not gonna kick out people because members don't like them. Um, that's just not, not gonna happen. Uh, if you're not bothering people inside of the gym, that's it. When it comes down, what it boils down to is we need to be adults and we need to learn how to coexist. And if you really can't be in, the, in a gym with that other person, don't come when they're here. Come at different times. Figure out, okay, they train in the evenings, I'm gonna start training in the mornings. I'm gonna do a set. I have been caught in the middle of people coming to me with long emails about how this person, this other member is a bad person uh, for these reasons and they did this outside of the gym and I need to kick them out. And I'm not going to pick sides. I'll listen to it, but I'm not going to sit here and pick sides. I've sat down with members and talked in person about why they don't like these people, this person. And I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna kick them out for because members don't like them. If they're doing something inside of the gym that needs to be corrected, I will. Um, there's been, at one point, 2020 and 2021 was a hot year for Untamed, uh, at Untamed, and in the world, I think, which I'll talk about in a second. But there was an, uh, a situation where there was an online back and forth and someone messaged me and said, hey, look what, uh, look what so-and-so said. I'm like, all right, what do, you, what do you want me to do? Like, I'm sorry, was it set in the gym? No, it was online, okay. Um, and they, they, uh, they offered me, they said, I want you to kick them out. I said, no. And they said, I will pay their membership, the one year membership right now if you kick them out. And I said, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go down that slippery slope of being influenced by members to kick other members out. Um, I've seen online, uh, unfortunately I've seen online people post something that was directed towards me because of how I handled something. And uh, I just see it and I say, no, that's enough Instagram for me. I don't get like fired up about it. I don't, uh, I don't hold it against those members. Uh, I just stay neutral. Um, that's it. So some people might say, oh, you're just turning a blind eye to it, but we don't, those situations usually die out or those problems usually die out. So I think that that method is working for me at least. Um, 2020 and 2021, there was, this was the great divide. I felt like uh, not only in the world, but at Untamed Strength, I could feel the tension in the gym. And it's so unfortunate and it's so petty in my opinion. 2020, obviously, COVID, lockdowns, mandates, a bunch of political stuff, George Floyd, Black Lives Matter, riots, racism, homophobia, uh, Republican, Democrat, conservative, liberal, all of this stuff back and forth. And unfortunately, everyone on Instagram, everyone in the gym follows each other online. And people post, they barf every thought in their brain on Instagram. And so now people are, who, who were, had a very like, cordial relationship with each other, we were training partners, we used to work together in the monolift, work together in the squat rack, 
um, oh, I saw what so-and-so said online and this and that, and they think this and they believe that. And people would like just stop training together and there was like some animosity. And that's when I got a bunch of emails from people about this person said this and this and they think that and they're such a bad person. I'm like, stop sending me everyone's stuff online that they're doing or saying. I don't care. Social media to me, especially like Instagram, has become, so there used to be a time when I would grow up where you had a diary. And if you had something on your mind and you wanted to get that off your mind, you had something in your heart that you wanted to express or maybe consolidate your thoughts or organize your thoughts, you'd write it in a diary. And you would close that diary and keep it to yourself. Instagram and our phones have been our own personal diary where we can just give all, everything we feel about every situation. And it's, it's going online at night and searching Instagram sometimes, at least in the past, it's better now. But uh, it would be like, hey Alan, uh, here's a, a diary from every one of your members. Why don't you read all this? No, hell no. I don't want to fill my head with all that. I don't need to know who he's voting for, who she's voting for, what she thinks of this. I don't care, man. It was so much better to just have a common goal of like, hey, we're in here to get stronger. Uh, this person offers a great spot. Um, they mo they're motivating, they're strong, whatever. Just leave it at like a gym relationship and that's it. Um, so there was some stuff like that, some back and forth between 2020 and 2021 that was kind of, uh, the, the tension at times was like palpable between certain people. A lot of the members just put their headphones in, they go to the gym, they leave. They're oblivious to it, which is cool. But the core group of members, maybe they know what I'm talking about. Um, so anyways, uh, I felt like uh, at that point, 2020, 2021, is when I noticed a lot of those issues. So I want you, if you're still listening to this, still listening to me ramble, and you go to a gym and you think that there's toxic gym cultures, toxic gym culture. I need to know what that actually means and what that looks like. So comment down below a situation in which you think in your gym it's toxic. Um, and I'll, I'll take a look at it. Uh, but I can't say that we've had any ongoing issues. I've never taken advantage of people. I try to treat everyone equal. Um, there are different people. Sometimes you get people that are kind of odd that sign up. Maybe people that say something that's a little inappropriate. And uh, if they do, I'll talk to them and I'll let them know, hey, you know, let's not. Um, but, okay, I need to start lifting. I am withering away here, losing all my muscle in this catabolic state of talking. All right, and as far as, have you ever had to revoke memberships and kick people out? In the past 11 years, it's only been two people that I've had to kick out. One of them's a short story, one of them's a long story. And I'll share the story right now. I'm just not, it's, I could talk about it for a half an hour, so I'm gonna be brief, leave out a lot of details. But once upon a time, there was an old man who signed up at Untamed Strength. Kind of a weird, wiry, just odd dude who signed up. And uh, this was when Untamed was a lot smaller. And so uh, the majority of people who came in were like, we're power lifters, a strong man. Nowadays it's more busy and so there's a lot more like general public. Uh, but I just kind of thought like, why is this guy wanting to sign up here? I gave him a gym tour, I showed him around, talked to him a little bit, asked some questions. He didn't really answer much of the questions. But he signed up, uh, to my surprise. And so uh, he was coming in and he didn't have any issues for a little while. He was just uh, kind of an odd guy. Sometimes members would tell me about like an exchange they had with him that wasn't bad. It was just funny, if anything. And uh, anyways, he started having some problems uh, in the gym. And he would, um, in particular, he, would, he hated the music. So he would like turn the music down um, or like, oh, you know, oh, let's, let's change this, change that. And you have this, you know, he just ask, change this music and blah, blah, blah. And members are like, well, there's nothing wrong with this music. Uh, and I agree, it wasn't anything too bad. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, sorry, there's a million things going through my head. And so uh, he was having an issue with the, with the music. Uh, and he was also having a an issue with his payment. So I was telling him, hey, your payment's not going through, you need to sign up. He just was kind of pushing it on. I need to sign up at this time. I said, okay, go ahead, sign up at that time. He didn't. So just these kind of problems. And one time in particular, he decided to um, 
shut the music off. Someone was going for a big lift, they had the music on, and he just shut it off. And they had said, hey, what are you doing? And he snapped on him, he started yelling at him, he called the lady a bitch, he's you know, complaining about this, and uh, I wasn't there at the time. So I come into the gym and I'm like, all right, this guy's done. Like, this has happened too many times, I've asked him not to do that, he's done. So I let him know, hey, you're, you're uh, politely, like I don't, uh, you're not paying a membership right now, and so we don't have to cancel anything, I just don't want you to come back, give me your key fob. He flipped out and he freaks out and he's going berserk. He's acting like a lunatic and uh, he's yelling at me and he says, you're gonna listen, you're gonna listen to that bitch. And he's like yelling in the gym and making a scene. And I remember he says to me, he says, you're gonna listen to that bitch. Are you a man or are you a mouse? And uh, so, so anyways, he gets kicked out, he's gone. Um, but that's not the end of him. So uh, about a month later, uh, well, I should, there's a bunch of stuff that happened, so I'll talk about this first. He, no, I'll talk, okay, I'll talk about this. So he, uh, about a month later, I get a uh, email in my spam folder, and it's from Better Business Bureau, and they're like, you need to, you have like one week to respond to this complaint. He formally filed the complaint about Untamed Strength, saying that we like play music uh, at a, a decibel that's like illegal in Sacramento County and like all this kind of stuff and saying that's a health hazard to be at untamed strength and all this kind of stuff. So I had to deal with that. Um, and then uh, he had left some really nasty, just ridiculous Yelp reviews, one star Yelp reviews, like three of them. And those have been deleted. I don't know what happened, but they just expired. Um, so uh, I don't know, but he, uh, he had left bad one star Yelp reviews and he was just trying to like get my business in trouble, I guess. Um, during this time, I heard from another member, another member who goes to the gym. He said, uh, dude, I gotta talk to you. I was at my house. This member said this. He said, I was at my house and I, I walked out to get my trash can and this old man is standing there and he says, hi. And he said, what are you doing here? And he's, he's pretty much tells him like, well, I, I miss you. I haven't seen you. The old man tells him this. I miss you. I haven't seen you since Alan kicked me out. And I just wondering if you want to get lunch together. And the member freaked out and was like, get away from me. This is a guy. And this old man is like s coming to this other guy's house. Get away from me. Don't ever come to my house again. I don't know how you got my address. Um, and then the old man started sending him mail. Like, I'm just wondering if you want to get lunch together, if you want to hang out. So this, come to find out, uh, hindsight is uh, we're kind of tracing back and talking to this member. This member that was being stalked, he went to Gold's Gym, and the old man was also at Gold's Gym. So they, he knew of him, because the old man would always talk to him. Well, this member quit Gold's Gym and came to Untamed Strength. Well, that old man followed him over, and uh, he was pretty much stalking this, this guy, this member because he liked him. And uh, so that was odd and creepy, but it doesn't end there. Uh, I get a, um, a phone call from a, a detective and he is talking to me, presenting this case that's been filed against me for physically, a physical altercation of me abusing and uh, assaulting the old man uh, that this old man wrote. He wrote this false story. Um, that I like abused him, I punched him, I beat him, he's got bruises and cuts on him and they're for me, I didn't lay a finger on him. And so the detective had to talk to me about it and uh, my out was there was a lot of members around when I kicked him out. Uh, so he had to get information from a few members and he had to go talk to them and interview them uh, to kind of corroborate my story and uh, the case was dropped. I don't know why he doesn't get punished for making that false story but anyways uh, nothing came about after that so that was uh, that was a creepy old man lunatic old man who is not allowed back in untamed strength and the other member that was kicked out he actually used to be a member way back in the day at the very first location 2013 and 14 and uh, he came back somewhat recently. And he was going around telling people in the gym when I wasn't there, it'd be late at night. He would tell people, hey, I got my, my business that I'm, uh, my online coaching business and uh, I'm gonna be starting a gym. 
You know, I like strongman competitive, strongman training, and uh, I'm doing t-shirt pre-sales for my business. Uh, dude, it'd be sweet if you could support me. Uh, if you want a shirt, just uh, like 20 bucks. And I'm taking pre-sales, pre-sale orders. So members would give him money, give him 20 bucks. So yeah, I'll support you, I'm trying to be nice. And they'd pay him. And uh, I didn't know he was doing this, but then uh, one member had mentioned to me, said, hey man, I think this guy's going around getting pre-orders. Uh, and I had asked him when the shirts are gonna be made. And he keeps saying like, next week, next week, but they're not being made. Uh, and I'm kind of thinking he's taking, taking people's money. So I said, interesting. So I, contact, I contacted him and he said, uh, oh yeah, 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 I have been, uh, but it's good, man. I'm, uh, I'm, um, I am, I'm getting the shirts made real soon, real soon. And I said, all right, man, you've got until I gave him a deadline, whatever. You gotta tell next week to get your shirts. If you don't have the shirts there, I want you to pay all those members back and stop asking people for money for your pre-sale pre orders. He didn't respond to it. And then a member out of the blue came up to me and said, hey man, I'd, I'd uh, keep your eye on that guy. I said, why? He said, I used to go to a gym down in uh, San Diego and he was there. And uh, he actually was going around asking people if they, would, uh, if they wanted some of his shirts for his, his uh, startup company. And uh, he was taking pre-sale orders from him and then he dipped out and he didn't pay him. And I said, well, I'll be damned. He's doing that exact same thing here. Um, and so, uh, so I, I contacted him, called him, he didn't answer, emailed him uh, and I told him, stay away from this gym, don't ever come back. Um, you're not welcome here. And he didn't respond back. Um, I told him I know what he's doing. Uh, he didn't respond back. And so, so that was it. I guess he was kicked out, uh, told not to come back. So those are the two stories of members who have been kicked out of Untamed and are not welcome back. I'm gonna see if I can just rifle through some of these and uh, get some quick fire answers. What piece of equipment gets broken the most? Treadmills, they are a headache. I've spent a lot of money on treadmills, more than, I'm, more than I would like to. It's like I have a rack, the first rack I ever bought, perfect. Exactly as it was 13 years ago when I bought it, uh, 12 years ago when I bought it. Maybe just some chalk marks on it. Barbells that I've had for 10 years, perfectly fine. Uh, but these dang treadmills, like every few months, it seems like there's a problem with them. Um, how do you decide what specialty bars to buy? Well, I think that after barbell, I would suggest a couple of things. I would suggest a an SSB is extremely valuable, whether you're a strongman competitor, a power lifter, whether you are dealing with general population who has have a hand or shoulder or arm injury, or they lack mobility, an elderly person who can't put their hands on a bar, SSB is clutch. Uh, the Elite FTS SSB I think is the best one, but Bells of Steel makes one that's just as good and it's only 45 pounds. I've seen SSBs that are like 30 pounds, so if you're working with someone who's unable to squat an empty barbell, that's a, that's a good option. SSBs, and then once that SSB was used and people were waiting for them, I bought another SSB and another SSB. Uh, so I just kind of duplicate those and that's how I decide what to buy multiples of. I don't buy multiples of things right up front, hoping people will use it. I buy it when it's a demand. Um, I would also suggest a Swiss bar or a neutral grip bar because sometimes that feels a lot better on people's shoulders than a bench press like this. And then beyond that, um, I don't think like a buffalo bar or a, a duffalo bar is necessary. I mean, I have a few trap bars, which is good. Some people like trap bar deadlifts more than barbell deadlifts. Um, I don't think like a cambered bar, a rackable cambered bar is all necessary. It's just, I like having as much stuff as possible. So the people just have a huge variety of stuff. And that can go back with equipment selling the gym sometimes when people are like, hey, what the, you got like 25 barbells I've never even seen. This is awesome. Um, so that's kind of cool to be able to showcase that as well. Opened my gym 18 months ago, needing to expand but can't afford a bigger spot. Advice. So, a couple of situations here. If you need to expand but you can't afford a bigger spot, this mean, this tells me you either bought too much equipment and you have nowhere to put it, so you need to expand and you don't have the money 
to expand, which is unfortunate. But if you, the only time I've needed to expand is when I have too many members to accommodate the space. It's just getting too busy. So I need more space, in which case I have higher member, more members means more income. So I'm able to expand. So if you have too many members in your gym and you need to expand a bigger spot, I think you need to start charging more. Um, whether that's charging more, letting people know, hey, it's gonna go up this much, or just grandfathering them in and then increasing it for, for all of the incoming members. Um, yeah, that's a tough situation to be in, to need to expand, but you uh, can't afford it. Here we go, thousands of people built home gyms during COVID and have decided to continue training at home. Have you noticed a decline in overall invest interest in commercial facilities? Thousands of people built home gyms during the pandemic, or during COVID, and hundreds have sold their home gyms. Uh, I'm just joking, but I'm kind of serious. Um, no, I haven't noticed any interest, uh, any decline in interest in uh, commercial facilities. In fact, I have more members now than I did in 2020 and 2021. And I'm not saying that's just due to COVID, but <clears throat> like I mentioned in the past videos, um, the handling of the lockdown with big corporate gyms and the mandates and the rules and the regulations and the, all this kind of silly stuff. Um, people were tired of dealing with it. And so they, they jumped over to a private facility. They jumped, not a private facility, but a, uh, a, a small business, uh, single owner operation because of how the pandemic was handled. So if anything, I mean, I guess you could say I, I benefited from it a little bit, but um, yeah, no, uh, I have not seen a decline in commercial gym interest. In fact, seems like in my area at least, there's all kinds of facilities opening up. There's powerlifting you know, gyms and CrossFit gyms and um, uh, in shapes and 24 and fitness at 19 and all these kind of things. So no, I haven't noticed any sort of decline. How do you hire good people? So I don't, I have two member, uh, two employees right now. Those employees have been members for a very long time. So I know them and I have a personal personal relationship with them. So I didn't have to worry about like an extensive job interview or to question their integrity, anything like that. Uh, it's helpful to have these long standing gym members because they know the gym so well. And so when they come into Untamed, if someone asks a question, boom, they got the answer right there. Um, so that was great. They didn't really need any on the job training, which was really helpful for me. If I was to put out a, a you know, an ad for a hey, gym, um, gym employees wanted and someone came into the gym, I don't know anything about them. I could ask them some questions. I could have them kind of shadow me for a little while, but uh, it really pays to know the gym and to know the clientele. So what I mean is if someone came in and said, Hey, what, uh, can you tell me a little bit about deadlift bar? What is that? you should be able to answer that question. Do you guys have a Texas deadlift bar? If the member, gym members like, or the employees like, ah, uh, what is that? Um, hey, uh, you know, uh, I saw, you know, these uh, rocks, you know, how do you, what are you supposed to do? How do you pick one of these up? Uh, they know how to do Atlas stones. They know how to use all the equipment. So that is really helpful for me. So um, that's it. I, I mean, like I said, I've had six employees before, but I've known all of them when I hired them and, um, um, so I didn't really have to worry about hiring good people, um, but that's my answer to that. I've got to end it there. Uh, no more questions. I. Thank everyone for all of these questions. I can't, uh, I can't talk that much for any more training sessions. So I'm finished with the questions. Thank you so much. Always remember, train out in time.